Saturday was extremely historic, as I alluded to on Saturday night. Uh, you know, this is the biggest test NASA's run in the last 50 years. Uh, it's the first time we've ever had four RS-25 engines fired up together. Uh, and the progress that we made and the team made in getting to that point uh, was really a huge milestone. Uh, the core stage and, and, and the RS-25 engines uh, performed perfectly. Uh, we started our inspections of the core stage flight hardware and the test stand. Uh, both are in excellent condition. Uh, we've, we've learned from the data that, that the shutdown did occur as a result of uh, a couple of test parameters that we had set on the, the hydraulic system that's powered by the core stage auxiliary power units. Uh, those those limits and, and what we've done for this test program in order to uh, protect the flight hardware is intentionally be a little conservative with our test parameters and, and allow ourselves some margin uh, as you heard the administrator say Saturday night, this is not just a test article, it's the first flight article. Um, I would tell you that I, I was extremely proud of the team and what they accomplished Saturday, um, as well as over the course of all the, the other seven green run tests that we did leading up to the hot fire. So I'll share a little bit about uh, what we know and, and what we don't know. And, and what's going to have to go on to drive the next steps. Uh, as I think most of you know, you know, we did uh, get to go for engine start at about T minus six seconds and then had a, a, a run of uh, just a little over uh, 60, 61 seconds. And, and we got a tremendous amount of data on the engines and the stage. And so the, uh, the engines did um, get to 109%, uh, generating a sea level thrust of 1.6 million pounds of thrust. Uh, we, we began to go through an aggressive gimbal profile of all four engines. Uh, and and that's at the point where we were beginning to throttle down the engines and then throttle back up to 109 percent and that's where we uh, saw the the stage perform as it was expected when it uh, picked up the two limit violations and went into what we call advanced to shutdown and the the advanced to shutdown process uh, performed as it was uh, Planned. Um, you know, part of part of the big objective that we that we had uh, leading up to the hot fire on Saturday was to get through uh, the new bleed configuration for the RS 25s, as well as get into the pressurization of the tanks, the liquid oxygen tank and the liquid hydrogen tank. Those those were successful. Uh, I know there was a lot of interest in the call out over the test conductors audio loop relative to uh, what we call a, an MCF, which is a major component failure. Uh, that was driven by a, a sensor issue that we had on the engine, uh, and it didn't have anything to do with cutting the test early. And uh, we, we can follow up a little bit more later in the conversation on that. Um, the inspections and a closer look at the data show that, that we didn't have any of a, sort of a flash or a fire damage to an engine and that the thermal blankets around the engines did their job in, in protecting the engines. Uh, and so the, the core stage systems just worked outstandingly. The, uh, one of, one of the things that I know we've all been watching uh, over the course of the years is, is the software and the systems that are used to, to operate the vehicle. The stage controller 
and uh, the Green Run application software, which is loaded onto the Core Stage computers, work perfectly. Um, so we'll, we'll go. We'll go back. We'll in our process of reviewing the data that we have. Um, we, we will be looking at what we've learned and uh, making adjustments to any of the test parameters that we think is necessary. Uh, for Artemis one, now, I will tell you in flight, um, we would not. I'm sorry, we would have continued to fly after encountering the condition that we saw in the test stand. But for the for the hot fire test, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the control systems were set up to save the vehicle for this condition. Uh, the teams continue to do their detailed review of the data uh, that we got from the test. Uh, they're assessing where the de where the data uh, demonstrates that we met our verification objectives or not, and so the the data analysis is going to drive us and inform our decision as to whether we either proceed to a launch or we perform an additional hot fire test. Um, we don't we don't have a date just yet on on when we're going to be at that decision point, uh, we'll certainly keep you guys informed as to as to when we get zeroed in on that date. Uh, the initial engine drying uh, with the RS-25s is has taken place, and the engine recycle activities are underway. And uh, that activity is the critical path as to whether uh, we proceed to. Uh, deliver the core stage for a launch or whether we perform a second hot fire test. Uh, 